A few weeks ago I told you why I stopped using MVVM in my personal projects and one of the main reasons for that is actually core data. While core data isn't perfect by itself, I feel like it's much easier and faster to build apps with it if I don't use view models. So let me show you what I did personally. So this is the very basic implementation of MVVM with core data. We basically have our content view here, which is just a view. And in there we have installed a state object, which is our view model. The view model is obviously an observable object, just as it always is in MVVM. And now our setup of the view model is a bit more interesting. So one very important thing is that when you're working with core data, you always need an NS managed object context, which in this case we can grab from the persistence controllers NS persisted container and then just say that dot view context. In this case, we're just hard coding it in our view model. Now in reality, I think for most indie apps, this is totally fine. For most small apps, this is absolutely fine. But there might be situations where you have different kinds of persistence controllers. For example, one that works with your app group, one that's only working with iCloud. Not sure about uh, why you would do that, but I am pretty sure that there are apps out there that have different persistence controllers or however you want to call the class that you're using there. So then you might have to go with some sort of dependency injection approach to actually get that uh, NS managed object context into your view models. In this case, it's very simple, but if you want to learn more about dependency injection, you can have a look at the video up there. I talk about an approach that I personally use in some of my apps in that video. And apart from our view context, we also have a published array of items, which of course is empty when it is being initialized and then in the initializer of our view model which is basically run the first time our content view is created since we have installed it as a state object in that initializer we grab our fetch request which is very handy core data or xcode actually auto generates these item or entity dot fetch request functions for you when you add core data to your project so that's very nice so we can just say item dot fetch request here to get our request and then we can just try for our view context to fetch that request. And if we get back our results, then we can just assign them to our items array up here. And then in our content view, we just have a list that goes over our view model dot items. And for each item, it just displays the timestamp in the format of a date time. So nothing fancy on the UI side. This is just a very basic example of how you would load data from core data with a view model. Now the big downside here is that this is not a two-way connection. Only once if your view model gets created, we run this piece of code here that loads all of our items from core data. In reality now, what I would imagine that you have is another function in your view model that might be called add item. And in here you would create a new item and save it to core data using view context.save, obviously, as always. But then you're in front of a conundrum here because your items array does not automatically update because you're not using the fancy fetch request property wrapper. So instead you will have to either reload your results from core data, everything, or you manually add it to your items array, which might keep it out of date with core data, depending on if you might run into errors when saving or whatever. So this requires a bit more of fine tuning to actually have live sync. You will have to do that yourself. And the same would be true if instead of a text, you would have a detail view here that changes some property of the item. It would also not automatically update in our view model, of course. So all of this you will have to keep in mind and you will have to write your own synchronization logic, I would just call it. I probably don't need to tell you about ChatGPT and OpenAI, the company behind all of it. But did you know that it's now less than a second away no matter what you're doing? You see MacGPT has this incredible new spotlight search like global hotkey. This means that you can use the power of GPT-3 or even GPT-4 at any time. For example, you can ask it what MVVM stands for. MacGPT also has a native chat client and a menu bar app. The best thing though is that you can use it completely for free. Or you can decide to support its development by paying for it. Either way, this is such a helpful tool. I use it literally every single day. 
Visit macgpt.com for more information and thank you Jordi for sponsoring this video. So on the other hand, let's have a look at the example without a view model and I've already written it out here for you just so we can go through it a bit quicker. The important thing is that without a view model, we are able to use the add fetch request property wrapper and this is so powerful. It's basically a one liner that not only loads our data from core data or entities. So in this case, our item that we have defined in core data, not only that, but you can also apply sort descriptors, you can apply predicates, you can apply animations. Why would you apply animations? Well, this thing is basically a snapshot listener. This thing listens to core data, listens to changes and automatically updates your UI and keeps it up to date whenever anything inside of that context changes. So in this example here, I just have a fetch request that gets me a fetched results of item. And this is a very specific type here that we're using with core data. But in reality, you can basically handle this as an array of type items. So a fetch results basically can be used as an array. And then in our example here, we just have a list that goes over the items and displays a detail view for that item. And this is very interesting because this is something that I do a lot of times in launch body, for example. So I have some kind of parent view for the entire screen for a list, for example. And then I have detail views for the specific list items. Now in launch body, that might be task board items, for example. And then in here, in our detail view, we just use the observed object property wrapper to access our item because let's have a look at the item declaration. You will see that it is an NS managed object. Now that probably doesn't tell you much, but NS managed objects are basically like observable objects. So very interesting. It plays together very nicely with Swift UI. So we can just use the observed object property wrapper to grab our item from our parent view right here. And then also when you're dealing with core data in Swift UI without view models, you will probably access the managed object context from the Swift UI environment. This is basically your uh, persistence container dot view context attribute. And this is needed to create new entities and to also save changes to entities. So in our detail view, this is just an H stack with a text of the items timestamp formatted as a date time, nothing special here. But then we also have a button to add a new item. And in here, we just create a new item, set its time timestamp and then save your context.save. And then when this button is pressed, the item is not only created, but since we're using the add fetch request property wrapper up here, the UI of our list will actually also get updated completely automatically. Now there's one more thing that you will have to take into account when not using view models and that is that your managed object context lives in the views environment. I've already mentioned that you're using the add environment property wrapper here to grab your managed object context. But what that means is that you also have to give your view that environment value. So in your actual abstract, you will have to add that view context or your persistence controllers, containers, view context to the environment of your application. In this case here, we're using just a preview persistence controller, but obviously in your case, you will probably use a shared instance or a very, some different implementation that you have personally. And then the same thing is true for all of your previews that you will also have to add the dot environment view modifier just to make sure that SwiftUI actually has access to your NS managed object context. So in the last video, I told you that I was using a lot of MVVM in my past projects and just recently stopped using it and went with a view only approach. Now I want to show you an example here of one of my older apps, which is called Forge. It makes it really easy to create marketing material for your iOS and macOS apps. Very interesting project in my opinion, but I just wanted to show you. So this is, for example, the view model for a layout builder screen, which allows the user to yeah, build custom layouts for your marketing images. And as you can see, tons of published properties in one observable object, tons of different functions, a lot of logic. Now, of course you could say, and that's completely true. This is completely testable, but nevertheless, this is about yeah, 400 lines of code of a view model. So I did actually use 
MVVM in the past, but for simpler apps like LaunchBuddy and on the outside it might not appear as a simple app, but on the inside, for example, this right here is the view that lets you edit your apps. So set their stages, set their app store links, upload a new app icon and so on. So as you can see, this is just an edit app view. And in here I do have my manage object context and I do have my application as an observed object, just as I told you beforehand. And then I have a few state variables and I initialize them up here. And then apart from the UI, I really only have two pieces of logic inside of this view, apart from, for example, on change, which is a view modifier that I use a lot in my view only approach to MVVM. So I would just suggest you to try out both approaches and see what works for your app. Personally, I am also using MVVM in some of my ongoing projects. I am also using view only in some of my ongoing projects. There's no one size fits all solution here. You have to take a look at your project and then figure out which approach is the best for you. If you have any questions regarding this topic, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you don't want to miss any of my future indie iOS development videos, just subscribe to the channel and then I will see you in the next video.